I'm so excited. Okay, so we're going to pray, and then we're going to start. Lord, I thank you so much for this opportunity, and God, I thank you for every daughter represented here that is so hungry to hear from you. And God, I, I pray that you will put me aside and that I will be this willing vessel and that the words they hear are your words and not mine. And I thank you, God, for what you're going to do. We thank you, God, that this gives, brings freedom and hope for all of us. And we're so excited and we're anticipating what you're going to do tonight. And we're going to go ahead and give you praise and thanks in advance because I know you care that much about everybody in here. And you want to see us grow and get free and become everything you've called us to be. And we're going to give you the honor and glory in all of my lady said. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm excited. Everybody good? Yeah. Yes. Had an awesome day, right? Beautiful. Love it. So good. Hey, I do want to say we're so excited. This is Doreen, and she is from our family room in Salt Lake City. So she's been um, going to the G5 Women. So last month, they did G5 Girl, I mean, Girl Talk. And it was outside, because they finally have good weather in Salt Lake. And they were sitting outside around a bonfire. They had a fire pit, and they did. And they were there till like 1130 at night talking. So yeah, it was pretty cool. So just excited. Honored to have you. Love to have you. We love our family rooms. Um, so I want to talk to you tonight about something. I want you to, if you have your smartphone or whatever, to write this down. I want to talk on embrace or escape. Embrace or escape. And the cool thing about this is every one of us get the opportunity to do one of these, either embrace or escape. So everybody knows me. I want to find out what they mean. I know in my head what embrace means. You know in your head what embrace means. But when you look it up, it's crazy. So listen to this. Embrace means to cherish, hold tight, or encircle. To cherish, hold tight, or encircle. And it also means to take up gladly and readily. Oh, that's my favorite. To take up gladly and readily. Now, escape means to get away fast. It means to avoid. It means to flee. And it means to slip out. So escape means to get away fast, to avoid, to flee, and slip out. When I started looking at that, I was like, wow, I've done a lot of escaping in my life. <laughs> a lot of that. I've avoided. Anybody? Just me? Ooh, thank goodness I got some honest women in here. And when I knew I was supposed to embrace something, I'm not real sure I took it up gladly and readily. I'm not quite sure about that. One thing I know is that life gives every one of us moments, every single one of us, an opportunity. And most of us have probably taken the escape route instead of the embrace because embrace seems harder to embrace what's in the front of you to embrace what you think god has for you to embrace what you don't understand to embrace what you really can't see but it's easier to just like flee and to escape but i really believe that god wants to fully show us his way this is the thing we may never fully understand what god's doing in fact i pretty much are going to tell you you're not when you're in the middle of something, you're not going to understand it. Listen to this, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. I love that. Is it not true? Says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Imagine that. He thinks different than we do. And he thinks better than we do. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. His understanding. Now, I want you to write this. I'm going to say it slow. I want you to get this. This is huge, huge, huge. Our blessings are in our obedience. Our blessings are in our obedience to embrace the unknown instead of escaping to the understood our blessings are our blessings are in our obedience to embrace the unknown instead of escaping to the understood we tend to go to what makes sense do we not i'm going to go to what makes sense 
I'm going to gravitate. But this is the thing. When you lean on what the understood, you miss the ultimate. When you lean on the understood, you miss the ultimate. Right now, I know for a fact that some of you are thinking in your head of a time when there was something going on in your life and you ran towards what looked right instead of what in your heart you felt God was asking you to do. Am I ever done that? Or is it just me? Like literally, because the other made sense. What the doctors were telling you made sense. What the people were saying made sense. It all made sense except for what God was gonna do. I wanna read this story and this story is so incredibly powerful about you know, one of my favorite lines I know, and PT says it all the time, is it's not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. So when we go embrace what we think is good, it's really not what it looks like. So I want to read this story. It is a very powerful story. It's the story of a lady named Pam. Pam and her husband, Bob, were serving as missionaries to the Philippines and also praying for a fifth child. There you go, Alicia, fifth child. <laughs> She's bringing up a team at G5. They were serving God in the field and just, I want you to guess this, they were serving God in the field and just knew that God knew the cry of their heart for another child because they were serving him. Pam contracted an infection of the intestines caused, caused by a parasite found in contaminated food and drink. She went into a coma and was treated with very strong antibiotics before they discovered she was pregnant. Doctors urged her to abort the baby her own safe, for her own safety and told her that the medicines had caused irreversible damage to her child. As she fought whew, the urge to escape and not embrace this crisis, she really fought the urge to be mad at God and question his plan. But she refused the abortion and cited her Christian faith as a reason for her hope that her son would be born without devastating disabilities physicians had predicted. Pam said the doctors thought she was absolutely crazy. They didn't think of it as a life. They thought of it as a mass of fetal tissue. So why should she risk her own life for this? While pregnant, Pam nearly lost their baby four times but refused to consider getting rid of the child and escaping God's promises. She recalled making a pledge to God with her husband. If you will give us a son, we'll name him Timothy and we'll raise him to be a preacher. Pam ultimately spent the last two months of her pregnancy in bed and eventually gave birth to a healthy baby boy, August 14, 1987. Pam's youngest son is indeed a preacher. He preaches in prisons, makes hospital visits, and serves his father's ministry in the Philippines. He also has played football. Pam's son is Tim Tebow. Talk about a blessing with embracing when you didn't understand it. Can you imagine? You're serving God in the Philippines. Living in a hut, I guarantee it, no air, nothing, given all you got and all you ask God for is this child and you don't understand why any of that would have to happen. But this I know, I, thought, I read this, you know what my first thought was? Can you imagine the witness that God just gave and what she did for these doctors who said to her, you're crazy. And instead, she didn't look at what she didn't understand. She didn't look at what she couldn't embrace and she decided not to escape and she could have. And instead, here is a man who has literally changed life after life after life, and still is, has built foundations everywhere, has done everything, and we all know him. When I said his name, you all know him. And I guess I just stopped to think of how powerful the embrace is, but how difficult it is. God didn't promise it was going to be easy. And I know there were times, like she said in this letter, when she was ticked at God, like, why would you do it this way? It couldn't, we were serving you. Could it not have just been easy? You can imagine what it put her husband through. But guess what it did for those doctors and the people now that get to hear this story. God uses everything, but I'm so glad that she was willing to embrace. 
and that she didn't escape. God tells us that we'll never necessarily understand it, and honestly, we probably won't. What we choose to see over what seems real is critical. What we choose to see over what seems real is critical. The reality of something we are facing is not God's reality at all. It's not what it looks like. The reality of something we are facing, it's not God's reality at all. When I went to have Blake, I had it all figured out. It was like going to be amazing. Great pregnancy. We're traveling. We're doing everything. I, when it came time you know, to pack your bag because you're going to the hospital, and I had, imagine this, a candle in my bag. Hospital probably wouldn't have let me light it, but I was going to try. <laughs> I had gum because I didn't want to be going <laughs> with bad breath on Tim. We had music ready to play. We didn't have cell phones with all the fancy things back then. So we, do, we had a player, a CD player. I made a CD of all the music that was going to be played while I'm in there. I couldn't wait to have this child. My mom had told me my whole life that I had big hips and they were for birth. And so I was ready to use these big hips. Ready to all, the, all this plan. And then five weeks before I was supposed to any, be anywhere near my date, my water breaks. And we're rushing to the hospital, left my candle at home, had no gum in my bag, didn't have any pajamas, nothing. Left the CD. He didn't have a CD player unless we played it from the car. That wasn't going to work. And I'm going into this hospital. People everywhere surrounding me. They're screaming. They're going crazy. Everything in my mind is going, this is not the way I planned it at all. And I wanted to escape so bad because none of it looked like what I thought. None of it. And I remember when the doctors hooked me up to all the fancy stuff, and that's what they were going to use. And they said, we, he seems to be in distress. Something's not right. I, 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 think, I don't know what it is. And they're looking over at the monitor, and they're like, we can't go with this new stuff. We're going to have to go old-fashioned, and we have no time to give you any medicine. So I'm not like this tall person. I'm short and little, and this doctor, love you women, this is it, had to go all the way up in me, with nothing, and try to attach a monitor on this child's head. Well, because he was in distress, he's going everywhere, all over the place, and they can't get it on his head. But if they don't, they can't get a correct monitor on his heart because his heart was going crazy. And they tried everything. They finally got it attached. I remember when Tim walked in, because they had told him everything was going to be fine. He went and parked the car. And by the time he came back, it was like insane. There were definitely no candles. I can tell you this. It was crazy. And I will never forget when they said to me, we have to have him out now. His heart is stopped. And again, in my mind, I'm like, this isn't what I planned. This isn't how it's supposed to be. This, where is the music? Where is the calm? And they rushed me out and said, we have literally seven minutes to get this child out or he won't be dead. Seven minutes. I look at Tim. I can't, he's just screaming, Jesus has got you. And I'm cut open and the baby comes out. What is my point? It's nothing like what I thought. Nothing. And I could have been so mad at God because didn't he understand how I planned it? And I, I've served him. We were on the road every weekend serving God, singing, doing all this. And then guess what happens? I go to have Bree. My water breaks early again. My husband's out of town. I go. I had it all planned again. I had to have a friend bring me. No candle, no gum, no nothing. And the doctor walks in and says, the exact same thing that happened with Blake is happening. Tim is on a cell phone on a private plane, and they lose cell. And the last words he hears is, oh, my goodness, it's happening again. That's all he hears. He's on an airplane flying. But it's not what it looks like. Had no idea what was going to happen. And out she came. When we go to think that we got all the plans and we can only embrace what we know and what we see, we stifle what God wants to do. I could have been at much more peace if I had just said, God's got this. This is how he has it. This is how he planned it. My favorite saying, and I want it on a shirt so bad, God can do anything, you know? And he can but for me, it was what I saw, and I didn't like what I saw. His eyes see what's not there and what's coming. His eyes see what's not there and what's coming. I want to read this story. This story is simply called The Window. 
It's about two injured men that were in a hospital. They were both hurt very badly. One was constrained to lay flat all day, but one was allowed to sit up next to the window next to his bed. The man that could sit up would tell the other man about the beauty he saw outside, the park, the blue skies, the children splashing in the fountain. The other man laid there and visualized it all and longed for the day he too could look out the window. Over the time, the man began to resent the other man for his place next to the window and what he could see. Not long after the man next to the window's condition worsened, one day he began choking and coughing and couldn't reach his alert button. The other jealous man, while easily in reach of the button, did nothing. He just watched him die. He wanted to see what he had been seeing all this time. The next day, they gave the man what he had dreamed. But he was, he was moved next to the window. To his surprise, as he looked out the window, he saw nothing but a brick wall. The other man chose to see what he wanted to see when none of it made sense. And I believe that God wants us to see what he sees and not choose escape, but in choose embrace. So I have some observations, and this is one of them. All of us have an escape route. All of us have an escape route. I would love for you guys one day to go when we, the goads used to go church hopping. So... <laughs> Two things PT told us. We're sitting towards the back, and I'm sitting on the aisle. And when they ask if this is your first time, you do not raise your hand because they will come find you, and they will get your information. So we would sit in this church because we were just kind of going around. Before we had Sunday church, we only had Tuesday church. But we always had an escape route. You know what we were doing, Annie. So we'd sit there, and if it got to where we were like, Oh, this is not what we thought. I don't know if you've ever been there, you know, and you're going, do I have to sit through the whole thing? And so Tim would go, okay, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> it's not good. Did we not do this, Bree? It's not good that a whole family gets up at one time. So I'm going to go first because I'm on the aisle. Gay, you wait five minutes. You and Bree get up. Call <laughs> like you got to go to the bathroom. And then Blake, you get up. And then we slowly will walk out of the church and go, whew, that was not what we thought. I'm glad we, but we had an escape room. Everybody has them. You all have them. So some of you, number one, might be your escape route, might be isolation. My way to escape is to isolate. I'm the poster child. I really am. That's what I learned to do. When I didn't want to deal with stuff at my house and I didn't want to have to deal with my precious mom and I love her dearly, I went to my room and I would spend hours, four and five hours at a time in my room. And I learned that my escape, so I thought, was isolation. Just go get away. Uh, a number one, another one, truthfully, you're gonna not understand this, but some of you escape by praying. Now, why do I say this? I've known a lot of people in my life that have hidden behind prayer. And they've used it as an escape. And what happens is when we go and we're praying and we're praying, and I don't know if you know this or not, but you can pray anywhere, just so everybody knows. You don't have to be in a closet, but no, it's my prayer time. And they're in there and they're in there and they're in there and they're in there and there's something God wants you to do or there's somebody you need to pay attention to or there's something, your husband needs something, but I'm praying, I'm praying, I was called to pray, I'm called to pray. And we escape by prayer. And I know some of you are going, no, that's not true. It's true. And people will use God to get away from God. And they'll walk away and stay in this place. But you don't understand, God's called me to do this. I get it. But maybe you could do it while you're on the way to go do it. Jesus prayed a lot, but most of the time he was on the move to do something. And he would always stop and take the interruptions that were going. And so just be careful that we don't escape in prayer and use it. And we can do that. The next one is, is some escape with anger. We get so angry with God that we go into this escape and we just go, I can't deal with you, God. I'm mad at you, God. I can't believe the things you've done. And we escape in anger. Some of us escape with revenge. I'll get back. My escape is I'm going to get back. You did this to me. I'm going to do this to you. That's just how I'm going to get back. And we all know 
that that is not where God wants us to go. God said, I'll take care of all that. You embrace me and what I have for you, but we go into revenge. Some of us escape with a substance. Some of us go find a bottle, medication, food, um, anything, internet, Facebook. I don't mean it wrong. Facebook is a substance. And it is a medication for people. I remember, I love my mom dearly. When my mom was alive, because she was a person that always wanted everybody to know what was wrong with her. Like, it was important that she, you know, I think that's why I'm opposite. Like, I could be dying, and the only person I'd probably know would be my husband and my two kids. I would never tell you guys. I, right, Tara? It's like nobody, like, why didn't you tell me? You had, my brother's the same way. He had a broken rib, and finally his wife called. You know your brother's in the hospital with a broken rib. I'm calling, why didn't you call me? He goes, you know I'm not doing that. Because we were raised by a mom who that's all she did. Well, hallelujah, when Facebook came along for mom, Lord, help us Jesus. Every week, Lord, please pray for me. I'm, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, my Father Almighty. Facebook and Instagram can be a substance. It can be something we escape to. Because then we can get into other people's stuff and forget what God's wanting us to do. I've been guilty of it. Let me see what everybody's doing. Let me see where they're going. And God's going, hello, I need you in the Word, or I need you here, or I need you praying for this person, or I need you to go talk and text this person and tell them you love them. And we escape, right, into substance. The last is we escape with blame. We're going to blame somebody or blame God. I don't want to embrace it. I'm going to blame you. And we have blame. We blame everything that goes on. So I want to talk about this really quick. What does embracing do? We've already talked about escaping. What does embracing do? Now, I want to go back for one second so that you remember. Embracing means cherish and take up gladly. Cherish and take up gladly. Number one, embracing brings blessing. When you are willing to avoid the escape and embrace whatever God's doing, that's when you get the blessing. Number two, it brings hope. Number three, this is kind of crazy, but I believe that embracing brings clarity, but that doesn't mean you're necessarily going to understand it. There's a difference. You can have clarity about something, but you may not really totally understand what God's doing. What's your clarity? That he promises he'll never leave you. He promises he knows what he's doing. I promise you, I say this to people all the time, God is not wringing his hands. He's not. And, you know, I, I love this about, I look around this room at so many people in the last two weeks of your lives where you have been through a lot. We got all Lisa's family who has been up and down and up and down with all kinds of things. We got Christina who they just had a house fire at their house up and down. And there's so many things that they could escape and go do and not embrace and go, God, I don't get it. I don't understand what you're doing. I do know this. I bet I can guarantee you this. What you've just walked through has brought your family closer together than it's ever been. Because you know why? When something happens, you got to embrace each other and you got to go forward. And I'm so proud of you for choosing that. I look at Lisa's family. Where's Lisa? Oh, I mean, well, Lisa, hey. And I look at everything that's going on with you and your dad. You're in the hospital. Now the dad's in the hospital. Now you're in the hospital. Who's in the I can't keep up with who's in the hospital. And you're going and you're... But, but I watch you all, and I watch you learn, and you went towards God and started to escape and blame God, and that's huge. And we get to do that. It is a privilege, and that's where the blessing, and that's where, and you didn't understand it. You didn't understand it, but you have clarity on the fact that God knows what he's doing. That's, I, that's one thing I'm clear on. One thing I'm clear, you know, I don't know if you guys know it or not, but in, uh, this doesn't have to leave here, really, but, I mean, they really want to take our land, and they've got it in place. And you know what our thing is we say every day? We either trust God or we don't. I can run the other way or I can embrace and go, okay, we just got a letter. They said they're coming back out to dig some more. Well, guess what we're going to pray? Find something in that daggone soil so you cannot build it here. But you get to choose what you do. This is the next thing. When you choose embracing, it gives you a platform. Why do I say that? God gives you a place to share where he changed your life when you could have escaped and instead you embraced. Yeah. He'll give you. You will start finding people coming to you. Christina will start finding people coming to her. All of us, whatever we go through, will find when you embrace God instead of run the other way and things happen, 
all of a sudden you're going to go, why did this person just walk up to me and they're dealing with the same thing I did? Because God's going to give you a platform. Because what are we here for? Not for my scented candles and bonbons. We are here for God's work because he has lost. The world is lost and they need hope. So he gives us a platform. The next thing is it, it gives you the fulfillment of God's plan. When you embrace, you're fulfilling God's plan, no matter how crazy God's plan is. And God's plans, I don't know about you, and I'm just gonna tell you this right now, I have never once understood God's plan in anything he's done, ever. Not one time. I've looked at it and gone, I'm so confused. <laughs> Every time I look at how I ended up meeting Tim. First of all, miracle of God that I went on a blind date. Me, blind date, miracle of God. Not how I would have planned it. Five years later, not how I would have planned it at all. I mean, I've got, hello, five years. That's crazy, long distance. You look at things in your life. It's never what you think, ever. And maybe it isn't. If it is, in a minute, I want you to testify because I'm going to hear about it. I'm not kidding. That means you've really got the heart and the eyes of God because you're seeing it the way God does. I think even when we think we see the way God does, why is that? Because he always thinks bigger than we do. He always thinks grander than we do. He always thinks more beautiful than we do. The other thing it does is it gives you a testimony. I had a girl tell me the other day, she goes, you don't understand. Everybody's got all these great testimonies and I don't. I said, whoa, time out. And we started going through the things that God has brought her through when she chose to run to him and not escape. And she's like, oh, I've got a testimony. Everybody's testimony is different. I don't know if you've ever listened to Tim Hawkins. He's a comedian. He, he will, oh my. One day, I'd love for all of us to go. It is, it, I don't even have asthma and I ask him like I do by the end of it. I can't even breathe. I'm dying. But he talks about that. He goes, don't you just wish sometimes you had a better testimony than some of these other people? You know, yeah, I was a drug, drug addict for 20 years and God got me off the street and I was in the gutter and he's going, well, I gave my life at 12 years old. <laughs> it's like, I wish I had a better testimony, but you know, I'm grateful that I didn't have that kind of testimony. So um, it says in Isaiah 43, 19, behold, I am about to do something new. Even now it's coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. God's making a way. We just don't see it. God's doing something. We just don't see it. I want to say this in closing, and then we're going to talk. This is something you really need to understand. Number one, God knows your habits. <laughs> He's not shocked by what you did today. I know you think he was. Maybe you were, or your husband was, or your children were. God's not shocked. God knows your thoughts. I love when people think they can hide from God. It is the most hilarious thing to me. And then God knows your location. <laughs> so the funny thing about that is escape means to get away and hide. And we think we are. But you can never hide from God. It's just prolonging what he had. It, when I look at the prolongings of my life, it ticks me off. And you would think you would learn, and you do, somewhat, and then you get back in a situation and you go back to the thought of, I'm running away from this, this doesn't look right, instead of always remembering what God's done. God gives you a victory so you have something to lean on. Yeah. So when you're in the middle of something else, you go, remember the victory? The other thing is that God knows your words. He knows your thoughts, location, habits, words, and he knows your past, present, and future. So therefore, we have every reason to embrace and not escape. God already knows. So I have some questions, and I, want, I really want to hear from you guys. When has there been a time in your life where you either chose to escape or embrace? And what did God show you through this? Now, just so you understand, while I'm putting this together, the many times... It came up in my mind. <laughs> More times of escaping than embracing. I can't even tell you. So just so you know right off the bat, you're not alone. Because it's very hard to trust what you don't see or trust the fact that what you see isn't really right and what it's going to be. And there's many times in my life where I have questioned God and not embraced. So whatever it is you say, 
you're not alone. Or it may be that you, the first thing that came to your mind is a time when you really did embrace God and what God did. I want to hear that too. I want to know because we all are in this together. And I know that the main thing that God is showing me in all of this is, okay, you have a choice. And it's up to you. You either trust me or you don't. You run to me or you escape the other way. Those are your choices. You decide. And then let me work, but don't make my work so hard. And we get frustrated with God, but we make his work hard all the time. I made his work hard this morning in something I did. And he reminded me of that immediately. So my prayer is after we talk that we will start being aware of our tendencies to escape, whatever that is. We isolate. We're not going to talk to people, whatever it is we do, and catch ourselves. Because, ladies, we need to reach this world. And there's ladies that need us. And if we're constantly escaping and not embracing, I don't believe we can do what God's accomplished us and wants to accomplish in us, right? So the floor is open for all my beautiful ladies. You'll go.